The Court of Arbitration for Sport on Thursday rejected Russia's appeal on the ban of the country's track and field athletes at the Olympics. The world's fastest man, Usain Bolt, said he backed the decision to ban Russia's track and field athletes. The IOC can still determine whether to accept individual athletes either as Russian uh, representatives or neutral athletes. Claudia, I want to start with you here. What's your reaction? Um, it's uh, way overdue. Let's talk about this. This has been going on forever. It's systematic doping, not only in Russia, many countries. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I've known athletes very closely as a young athlete myself. Uh, they've been trying this since pre-puberty because they are honed to become these amazing athletes. Now, is it late? No, it's about time. Now, is all this uh, testing relevant? Not really because they're so far behind. Now, is Russia the only country that should be scrutinized and looked a little closer? No. There's a whole lot of countries that are doing it because, again, it's readily available. The, the, the process for doping is so far advanced compared to the process of testing that by the time they catch up, it's already too late. They're already obsolete. Mm -hmm. Case in point, Tour de France, it took them forever to catch up. Now. Is it only track and field? No, let's look at wrestling. Let's look at uh, weightlifting. Let's look at uh, swimming. It's across the board. It's really an epidemic. So at this point in time, I feel really bad for these guys that were actually clean or tested clean because you know we still need to know all those sample Bs that were never opened because the scandal is not only that they tested positive, yeah. is that protocol was not followed. Mm -hmm. And across the board, I know firsthand, I've, saw, I've seen it, children at the age of 9, 10, wow. being taken uh, through hormone processes. That young. Yes. So Gymnasts. Sad. They, I, I mean, it, it, and it's a process. It, it doesn't start when you're at the high end, no. at the ultimate level yeah. of athleticism. It starts at a very young age. Specifically, gymnastics is one of those sports in certain countries where they do not want those girls to grow up, develop breasts, so they inject them with hormones in order to maintain them at a certain size, at a certain weight. Makes my stomach turn. This is not new. This is definitely not new. Now, did the IOC finally open their eyes and say, okay, we gotta do something about it? Is Russia being an, used as an example? Absolutely. Is it fair? No, but again, you gotta start somewhere. It is so sad. It is. I just feel like the fact that this is happening, and you know, we were getting some names from our, from our re researcher, David Sabino, and he told me that at this point, two Russian track and field athletes have been cleared to compete in Rio. Their names are Daria Klishina, and who is a long jumper, and Yulia Stepanova, who is a middle distance runner. And I think the sad part about this is that it breaks the Olympic dreams of other mm -hmm. people. It ha it's happened before because of uh, political unrest that a lot of unaffiliated athletes have competed at the Olympics. And what breaks my heart in the terms of the, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is that they've been hiding this for so long and not all of a sudden you grow a conscience. That, that's the part. But my admiration of the IOC, it's kind of weird, right? Puerto Rico being a territory of the United States is usually not allowed to compete in most international competitions by itself, most of the athletes. But the IOC recognizes Puerto Rico as an individual, individual country and you know, Puerto Rico has won medals. So the Olympics for me were so special it was the only time I got to see athletes from Puerto Rico carry a flag yep. instead of doing it under the flag of the United States. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. So to see the, the IOC, who is a governing body that I sort of have a very, very soft spot for, all of a sudden grow in a conscience, it seems a little bit disingenuous to me. Like you said, Claudia, it's happened for so long. Now we're going to care. So I know those comments from some of them who are, you know, from some Russian members of the Olympic Committee are saying mm -hmm. this is politically motivated. This is just not true. Like, why are you guys doing this? And I love it. They called it. Thank you very much, everyone, for the funeral of athletics. Like, this is the this is what this the Russia sports minister and actually Yelena Isinbayeva, a two time Olympic pole vault champion, said that they called the IOC. But I do think that they're being a little bit hypocritical, just a little bit. When you use the word sad, and I, th I think what's sad is um, you have 68 Russian track and field athletes. Yeah. Now you only have two that are going to be allowed to compete individually um, without the affiliation, uh, of course. So they're not and representing it, Russia. Right, which, which I think one of my favorite things in watching, I don't know about you guys, but watching the Olympics is the, the opening ceremonies and, of course. And, and how the countries come out. And, and, and the, as you said, the athletes, they're so prideful. They have, they're the wearing flag. the flags and their special uniform. It's going to be interesting to see how do these two athletes walk out 
um, for, for that, that opening. That's going to be interesting to me. But you're telling me out of, out of the 68, right? I said 68, mm -hmm. that they're all doping? Why is it that in one of these, by the way, Yulia Stepanova, okay? She's the whistleblower, by the way. So and she's because, allowed to run. Because, yeah, because she, she was the whistleblower. So, okay, she's one of the individuals who, who, are, who, is allowed. who are allowed to, yeah. to participate. I, I just, I don't think it's fair. You, you, I, I find it hard to believe that all 66 remaining Russian track and field athletes are doping. Like, like what, how, how do you, do you do individual testing now to, to, weed, to weed those out? Something has to be done. Because you've got a, and, and keep in mind, we're talking about, understand what it takes to be an Olympic athlete, mm -hmm. the commitment. Mm -hmm. You talked about uh, gymnastics. I, I, I've had several g friends that, that were gymnasts who, like, you, you live away from your family so that you can be near a gym. Like, there are sacrifices that families make, that athletes make My for, this, for this dream. For this dream, this isn't like, and, and we've been talking about it because of, you know, the, the, the professional golfers who aren't going to go to Rio, right, mm -hmm. because they're afraid of Zika. Well, they still, Spieth, Rory, Day, they still, they're, they're professional golfers. It's much different when you're talking about an athlete who doesn't have that professional kind of stage to perform in, and this is it for them. And, Do you think and, they shouldn't be banned? So what I'm saying is, is I don't... I, you're, I'm sure that out of the 66, because now there's two, right? I'm sure out of the other 66 that I'm not that they're all not doping. You, if, if you're, I'm gonna take uh, the Kool-Aid away. Really? Yeah, I stopped uh, the Kool-Aid. Really? Oh, yeah. all isn't that isn't that a huge assumption though, Claudia? To sit here, it's to sit a fair here. assumption. It's a fair assumption. Really? You think that's fair? It's a fair assumption, and I'm gonna tell you why. Just because there's a whistleblower, she is she's not clean. Just because she's clean now, it doesn't mean she wasn't participating in the process. I'm telling you right now. So you're saying you're saying that you believe that every single you said track something? and field pl um, athlete for Russia, I think at least nine percent. Okay, okay, but still. At least 90%. So still, so still, all right. So now you've got that 10%. But now we have you, Now you've got that 10%. Those are the ones you're hurting for. Who, that I am hurting for because this is, this is a sacrifice. This I is, get it. Yes. And, and, this and is we know, this is commitment. every year. Yes, and, and you can, but this is your life. Can this qualify. is everything. These are dreams. These are people's but dreams. But hang tight. You said something very, very important. They've sacrificed everything, and the sacrifice comes at a cost. And that cost comes with whatever it takes to make it I am going to do it, and I hate to say it, it's it's an unwritten rule. If you ain't cheating, you're not trying. But the and point, I'm gonna tell. The, the sad part is, I'm not con, I'm not condoning it. Yeah. It's just a reality. That's what it takes. It's a reality. I come from an era where I remember a hundred meter dash that was being ran in ten, maybe a little bit over ten seconds. They've shaved off to 9.93, 9.92. Oh, I'm sorry, but <laughs> that doesn't happen naturally. There is no way. Mind you, I've never performed at that level well, we can at all. We also make a broad assumption that every Olympic athlete is doping. No. I, I, I will not stand for that premise. I understand, I but I'm saying yeah. those people that do do it, and it, it, because I have seen what it takes, I've seen the sacrifices, I've seen kids being taken away from their homes, I've seen government systems systematically because again, they are representing the country. It's not even their choice. I'm telling you, 80% of those kids that walk out of the house, they don't have parents overseeing what, what's yeah, going Claudia, on in this Yeah, that's what room. I wanted to ask you. Did they know? Because I'm still stuck on the fact, I'm, and maybe it's my own naivete, hearing that eight and nine year old girls, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, no, my no. niece that's staying with me right now, that, that's that age, and the thought of that. And, and again, I didn't know that it was happening at that young of an age, and when you're 18 plus, it's your decision, whatever you want to do to the body and the side effects, but I'm just thinking of their development, prepubescent, and, and, yeah. all, and all the detriments that that can create to them. Most of them, they have no clue. So the, pa the parents don't the, know. The parents don't know, but again. Do the kids even know what they're doing? I, none of them. But again, it's even if they did understand or had an idea or an inkling, my child is going to represent my country. So what's more important Got at it. that point in time? Mm -hmm. And we go back to this is a great platform for me to move on to bigger and better things. So when we're talking about third world countries where we don't have access to Major League Baseball, to NFL, we don't have access to those professional established leagues, being an Olympian is the highest That's degree it. in athleticism. So if it's going to take for a guy to say, you know what, you just take this little pill. Or you know what, I'm just going to give you a B12 shot. Yeah. What are they going to say, no? I, I completely, it's not that I am sitting here pretending this isn't happening. And obviously, your personal experience with it, I 
was never even close to being an Olympian. I mean, in anything. Not me either. Never, then maybe playing chess. If playing chess was an Olympic sport, I'd win. <laughs> but I'm just, it's not really. So I defer to you, you know, in terms of that. But I also can't stand with cheating that every single I, I just I can't do that. And I just, my favorite part of this is when the conspiracy theories come in. Mm -hmm. And because in 1984, it, I was just looking at the, you know, when Russia, like didn't, as we, as we well know, they boycotted the 1984. In the absence of the then USSR, the US medal count skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. It went to 174. And then when, when Russia, when the Soviets started competing, it went down to 94. So it's not only, you know, the competitive balance also changes in the Olympics without the Russian athletes. And that's so sad. And the fact that we are casting this global blanket on all these Olympics, and that's where Anita's point comes in. The fact that now we think that every Russian athlete is a doper, it's so sad. You know what? I, I, so their hard work? I understand. I, and that's the sad part, because I was in the Olympics in 2000, actually 96, 2000, 2004. Yeah. And you can see the difference between these kids that come for the first Olympics to the second Olympics. I've had a chance to see kids coming into for a third yeah. Olympics. Yeah. You can see the difference. And steroids or doping in general will actually enhance, but it doesn't give you the genetic benefit or that predisposition to be at the elite. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna defer to baseball. We could, we could argue to we're blue in the face. Can steroids really help you with eye-hand coordination? Not really. Does it help you with a bigger bat, the recovery period? Absolutely. But when we're dealing with kids, again, that only have this opportunity to shine and represent, it's really difficult to say no, especially when you're completely ignorant on the subject. And when you're representing the country one, two, three times, I'm going to defer to a country, a very small country, who's very well known in boxing, Cuba. Absolutely. And when you're fighting over and over and over, day after day after day, making weight, and you're still training and you're still sparring, it's very difficult to be uninjured, and unhurt for the next fight. Very difficult. So, so I, am, I, I am going to exhort to common sense. I'm not saying that I have proof for one or the other. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. I, I just, I wanna share be before we move on to our next topic, I wanna share a, a quote from Usain Bolt, um, if we can pull that up. And, and this is what he had to say. The doping situation in track and field is getting really bad. And if you like, and, and if you feel like you need to make a statement, then thumbs up. This will scare a lot of people. It'll send a strong message, message that sport is serious. Yes. Now, again, I'll go back to the fact that I don't believe that all 68 Russian track and field athletes are doping. I do believe that there are, are a few in this bunch that unfortunately their dreams are getting destroyed. But I understand, I understand what Bolt is saying. He's saying that maybe this decision needs to be made for the greater good yes. in regard to what could happen. The innocent happen. will suffer for the, for the guilty. And, but at the end of the day, I still think it's very sad. It's sad. I understand. Of course, for, for more reasons than one. And, and again, this is why I said I had so much fun doing the show with you guys yesterday, because it's such unique perspectives and diverse perspectives, and I really appreciate it. And thank you for sharing uh, your story there with that as well. Up next, we're going to stay with baseball. Uh, your wheelhouse, Marley, Alex Rodriguez, <laughs> oh, is ranked God. 21st all-time best player in ESPN.com's MLB rank. Is there a problem?